On this example, we're told that our angle theta is between zero and pi over two, which basically means it's in the first quadrant. And we're tasked with finding all the other trigonometric ratios if we're given that sine of theta is one over seven. So to do these types of problems, I always like to draw a quick triangle, make it a right triangle because we're dealing with trigonometric ratios. I'm gonna use theta to be in this corner and indicating that is helpful as far as labeling things and making sure we're focused on the right thing. All right, from here, we have our opposite side, our adjacent side, and our hypotenuse um, based on that, where that angle is located. Now, if we wanna put our, um, the one over seven into this triangle, um, sine based on Sokotoa is gonna be opposite over hypotenuse. So we can say that one goes on the opposite side and seven is gonna be the hypotenuse side. All right, from here, we, we need to find cosine tangent, secant, cotangent, and cosecant. Well, one we can get right off the bat is cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So that basically means that you um, switch the numerator and denominator. So we can say that cosecant is gonna be seven over one, or with a little reducing down, seven's a little bit better answer. All right, now for the other ones based on Sokotoa, we're gonna have to use um, the adjacent side. Now we don't have the adjacent side yet, but what I like to do is use the Pythagorean theorem, which is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And let's see about filling in. Now I'm just for the time being calling the adjacent side a. So a squared plus one squared equals seven squared. And solving for a, it'll be a squared plus one equals 49. So a squared is going to be when we subtract one and move it to the other side, 48. We'll apply a square root to both sides to get rid of the square. We don't need to worry about the positive and negative case in this situation because of the real life implications that this is a side length. It wouldn't make sense for this to be a negative side length. Now, as far as breaking this down further, I think we can think of 48 as 16 times three will give us 48. And why we'd wanna split it up in this fashion is because 16 is a perfect square. So you can further reduce by taking the square root of 16 times the square root of three. So we have four times the square root of three is A. All right, now constructing these additional uh, trigonometric ratios from Sokotoa, we can say the cosine, here, I'll put this in our triangle so we're looking at the right place. The cosine is gonna be the adjacent four square root of three over the hypotenuse. The tangent will be opposite one over the, over the hypotenuse. Uh, sorry, the opposite one over the adjacent four square root of three. And we could rationalize this by multiplying numerator and denominator by the square root of three. It'll be a little bit cleaner answer. Although I think computer systems tend to be okay with leaving it as uh, with the radical and the denominator. All right, so square root of three over four times three will be square root of three over 12 for the tangent. Next up, we have the secant. Well, for these other ones, these are the reciprocal identities. Um, we can say that secant is the reciprocal of cosine. So we can say seven over four square root of three Again, maybe we rationalize this by multiplying numerator and denominator both by square root of three. This will give us seven square root of three over four times three or seven square root of three over 12. Cotangent again is inverting numerator and denominator of tangent. So I'm gonna use the first version before we rationalized and say four square root of three over one is gonna be four square root of three. So that's how we can find all of these trigonometric ratios based on being given one of them. All right, hope this helps out. Get down that uh, Sokotoa, get down the Pythagorean theorem. They're really, really helpful in doing these. All right, till next time.